Welcome to the Bernard Lee Poker Show. We are very, very fortunate to have this guest on. She's been a guest on our show previously, and she has done so much for the world of poker and so many associations, so many industries, uh, but specifically for the Women's Poker Hall of Fame. She is one of the founders. She also founded the Lips Tour, which is the ladies' international poker series and been part of so many organizations including um, poker gives she is also a member of the women's poker hall of fame as she was nominated the last time in 2018 and was inducted along with maria ho the Women's Poker Hall of Fame uh, new list of inductees is now coming right around the corner for 2022. Obviously, there was a halt in 2020 due to COVID. And we are here to talk with this incredible woman. Welcome back to the show, Lupe Soto. Lupe, thanks for joining us here once again on the Bernard Lee Poker Show. Well, thank you very much for having me. This is pretty exciting. <laughs> You obviously were inducted into the poker uh, women's poker hall of fame last time. And it was a little bit of a surprise, right? You were nominated. You knew that, but in the whole process, you didn't know because you, you normally contact the person who gets nominated uh, inducted because you have a lot of behind the scenes stuff, but you didn't know about it, right? They kind of did this all behind the scenes to surprise you. Well, it's interesting because, uh, you know, we, we started the Hall of Fame in 2008. That was our very first year. However, we had, you know, we'd already been talking about it and talking about it. And there was always the person who'd say, you need to be in the Hall of Fame. Right. right. You need to be in the Hall of Fame. So every year I would be nominated is not, people don't know this. I would take my name out. And I just figured that it was being the founder, first of all, you don't want to say, look, I'm building this so I can right, get in. Right, 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 right. <laughs> look what I built. And yeah. oh, oh, I got in. Oh, what a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> so ridiculous. Right, right. So my family used to tell me, come on, mom, this is crazy. You, you know, you do so much. Blah, blah, blah. And I said, listen, I am going to work as hard as I ever worked. And in 10 years, if the Hall of Fame has been embraced by the industry and I'm still doing what I do and my name does come up. I'll tell you what, I won't pull my name. And yeah. so that was the agreement I had with my, my family, you know? And so 10 years rolled around 2018 and there it was. And I struggled, you know, like, Oh, you're like, Oh God, now 10 years. It actually happened. Oh no. Now what do I do? <laughs> yes. It's like, Oh, this is kind of crazy. So, you know, my, I, I just said, you know, this is what I told my kids. It'd be bad if I didn't, you right. know, honor what I shared with them. So I said, okay, I'll just let it go. And, yeah. and there were some amazing women on that short list. Right. So I figured, you know what? I am not that well known. I, I am known with women, but I didn't feel like I was, you know, such a, a mega star like Maria Ho, who's right. been on graced on the cover of every poker magazine, every entity, every interview, they all want her. Right. And of course she's cute and young and whatever, yeah. <laughs> you know, she's an, an amazing gal. So yeah, I just said, okay, I'm going to let it happen. And I was very blessed in so many ways to be elected, to be inducted that year. And that was 2018. And, but I got in with Maria Hall. So I had to take pictures with this cute little young thing. It was just wasn't there, you know? <laughs> well, before we get into talking more about the poker, Women's Poker Hall of Fame and the in induction process and also how people can help out as well, I think it'd be great for people to kind of hear a little bit more about your background, how you got into poker, and really all of the activities that you are uh, part of. Because I think then people who don't know your background will fully understand why you are part of the Women's Poker Hall of Fame and you were inducted in 2018. Because literally, this list, you know, I have, a, I, I usually give a intro to many people. 
I, if I gave the full intro to you, which by the way, was already, as everyone just heard about a minute, minute and a half long, I would have literally been, it would have been a Tiger Woods thing. Like people would have been like, all right, all right, enough, enough. Enough already. And, <laughs> yeah, enough. I mean, it would have just kept going on. So really kind of, if you don't mind, start back. When did you start getting into poker? How did you get into poker? And then we can talk about all the activities that you've done as well. Well, the reason I love this story is yeah. not because uh, it's my story. But I think it's the story of many women, okay? I was the girlfriend who sat behind the boyfriend at the poker table. And yeah. um, we would do date night and we would go to the casino and you know I would spend my little $100 at the blackjack table in about two seconds. And then we would move to the poker room and yeah. he would sit down and play poker with his $100 you know, that we, right. we did on our date night. And um, I sat behind him. And I had nothing else to do but to watch. And yeah. after about six or so months of doing this every Friday night, I started critiquing his play and <laughs> you know, asking him why he was still in that hand after, you know, so knowing he was losing or, you know, whatever. And finally he got upset with me and said, see that gal over there at the podium? She will, and he gives me more, a hundred dollars. He says, go over there and have her you know, get you a different table and you sit yeah. down and play. And I was like, oh no, that was the beginning of a beast for me. Cause I loved poker. It was so intriguing. There was just yeah. so much, um, you know, critical thinking that goes on with poker and stuff. And now mind you, I was playing two, four limit stud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was a long time ago. Yeah. So, uh, that was the beginning of it. And then we had met some people online and this is the mid nineties. Okay. 95, 96. So I, um, in talking with them, cause back then it was the boards. It wasn't really even like real internet. Right. And they said, Hey, you know, we're playing poker. And they started, it was when they started, uh, who was it? Planet poker or something. It was one of those. Right. Right. First planet places. poker, could, paradise poker. Well, those yeah, were the yeah, first yeah. few. All right. Right. Like, oh, this sounds kind of fun. So right. We went and um, in 1996, I quit my profession and I locked myself in the house and I studied everything there was to know about the internet and about graphics and all this stuff because I just loved the internet and what it could do. Well, it you with that time, you either go to pornography or, or gambling, really. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so fortunately, I was in love with poker. <laughs> right, right, right. Didn't have the looks for right. porn, but right, anyway. right, 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 right. So, um, so we wound up playing with some of these people, and because I was dabbling with internet, uh, MSN started the groups. Uh, remember Microsoft, and they had groups, and so I started a group with MSN players, and then the with some other friends, and we call it the Victory Poker Players, mm -hmm. and um. We just grew this little group of all kinds of, hey, come on. We used to talk about poker and all kinds of stuff. And then we got the wise idea of starting a, a like a junket. Let's go to Vegas. Let's everybody meet because we were all on the internet, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we had competitions and all these other things and we brought people together. It was a total blast. I was in love with everything about poker, not just the game, uh, the, the people that I met, having events. It was like somebody i mainline that shit okay i'm just right saying. right so it was awesome. <laughs> then right. uh we we had an opportunity to have things like competitions between the men and the women and then at the end of the year we would have like a gender defender kind of a battle battle of the sexes to see who was the better from all the winners and then the next year uh poker got kind of political and it was like, well, you know, it's not a gender specific sport and, you know, we don't have to be playing separately and blah, blah, blah. So the decision was made because I was only one vote. The decision was made to integrate again. And well, we had a blast playing us ladies yeah. by ourselves. And so I said, screw this. I'm going to start a, um, an online group. And it was called Poker Chicks, C-H-I-X. Poker Chicks was just women who played. It was the first online forum for women. And we had probably about, I don't know, about 4,500 women that played wow. poker. There was tons of women who played poker because you could do it from your living room. Yeah. You didn't have to leave. And it was online and it was around the world. So 
had online poker stayed as a legal entity in the United States, I don't think that we would be seeing the 4% for the main event. I think we'd be seeing massive numbers for mm -hmm. women entering into, <clears throat> I mean, okay, massive to me is like 15%. Well, yeah. no, but still, I mean, 20%. four to 15 is four X, right? I mean, so it's still, it's big, right? Yeah. I mean, if you had 15, 15%, that's basically about one six, 16% is one six. You're saying every table would have one or two women at every single table on average. Yes. And Players I think who that play in the world it. series. No, that's, that's, I, I, I honestly, I'm saying this. I was there for 10 days uh -huh. and I'm actually trying to think, I think there was only one table where I actually had a woman at my table and coincidentally, there were two of them, but that was it. And uh -huh. I'm talking 10, you know, 10 days of playing wasn't 10 tournaments, but it was a couple tournaments here. I mean, so you can see it like it's very, it is not common. So yeah, absolutely. 50 would be incredible. Right. Right. So basically, um, the women got together on Poker Chicks. It was so much fun. We loved everything about it. I lived in Southern California in San Diego, and there's a small card room called Ocean's Eleven, and it's in Oceanside, California. Well, they hosted the California State Ladies Poker Championship. I went because I, I was terrified because it was such a, it was a championship. Oh my gosh! And I felt myself very amateur, right? Well, it was. Phenom. We had, they did it up. They had a spread for all the women for every event. It was three days. They had fashion shows, entertainment, contests, plus poker. It was, oh, I mean, I can't even tell you how phenomenal it was. So I got to be friendly. I met Linda Johnson and Jan Fisher and Susie Isaacs and Marsha Wagner and all these icons of women in poker, right? Who have been around since the beginning. And, um, and of course I got very friendly with the operation people of Ocean's Eleven. And I said, you know, we really need to take this and take it to all women who play poker all around the country. My ignorance, okay? I did not know. <laughs> so um, I talked into the Ocean's Eleven into working with me and we started the Ladies International Poker Series, Lips mm -hmm. Tour. Mm -hmm. And we kind of had it as kind of that, that formula of making it an event that women would come to not only for poker, but other things. So um, we started that. What I didn't realize is that casinos do not, at that time, especially did not play well with others. They're all about themselves and competing against other casinos and, and that kind of thing. So when this collaboration uh, idea was proposed, they were just really not that interested or they were resistant. Well, fortunately for me, the World Poker Tour had just established their uh, charter members for mm -hmm. their first season. And one of those entities was the Bicycle Casino. Right. I, well, Bicycle Casino, Casino is the sister property to Ocean's Eleven. And so when I went to them, there was a fantastic woman, Kelly, who was their marketing manager. And she sat down and listened to everything I had. What I didn't know at the time, I learned later, was that her mother was the woman who started the California State Championship at Ocean's Eleven. Okay. Mm -hmm. Billy Brown. She's in the Hall of Fame. She was mm -hmm. inducted posthumously. So Kelly opened up her little book because she had just come back from the World Poker Tour Summit. And she called every person on that initial charter list and said, hey, there's a gal here in my office and she's proposed something that I think we need to embrace. Mm -hmm. And I would appreciate it when she calls if you pick up the phone and talk to her. Mm -hmm. That was the beginning of the list. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. So I was so fortunate. And those people were more open because they had just signed with a third party, which is the World Poker Tour. You know, so I have been borrowing the world poker towards relationship to get into other casinos since then <laughs> right right <laughs> right know? and now right, it's right. commonplace you see other entities working with other you know casinos and stuff as right. third party but you know back then it wasn't like that so because i got to travel the world i mean well not the world but i'd say the united states and some of the closer countries we 
I realized that there were some women and I learned their stories who were phenomenal women. I mean, they were groundbreakers either on the industry side or as a player or both sometimes. Right. You know, look at people like Linda Johnson. I mean, she's a bracelet winner and she, you know, was an industry person. She had card player a magazine and then card player cruises. So, and, and they were so supportive, you know, so, so supportive that I knew that if I didn't know, and I'm the kind of nosy woman who has to be in everybody's business and low, know everything about how things happened and all that kind of thing, that if I didn't know, neither did the rest of the industry about these phenomenal women. So I got to, uh, you know, I started talking to other people and I said, why isn't there a hall of fame for these women? They're phenomenal people. The poker hall of fame doesn't have any women in it that at that time. That year that we started was the year that they inducted their first woman, and that was Barbara Enright. <coughs> right. And she was also, um, you know, the, the, I call them the fabulous four. The first four women who were inducted into the Women in Poker Hall of Fame was Barbara Enright, Linda Johnson, Susie Isaacs, and Marsha Wagner. I mean, these are people who have been sitting at the tables for eons, you know, and, and making things happen in the industry. So right. that's how the Women in Poker Hall of Fame started. And um, you know, 10 years later was when I was inducted, but then COVID happened and, uh, COVID really messed us up because we were prepared for the hall of fame because we do it every two years. Right. And the only reason we do it every two years, at least at that time was because the number of women who have been in the industry long enough to qualify and, you know, been able to have those achievements was a limited number. So we are, um, now, you know, at that point where we have some gals that are young and killing it, you know, so that might change, you know, the, sure. the number of years that we, we do it. But anyway, long story short, COVID messed us all up. You know, um, it, you figure we was in 20, 2020 was the year it was supposed to happen. And that's when COVID hit. And even last year, we were starting to say, okay, let's try it it still wasn't time. I mean, there was still so many people that were ill and, you know, there was just wasn't time. Now we feel like, Hey, anybody who has uh, wanted to be vaccinated can be vaccinated or is doing whatever prevention, you know, for themselves. Every, we've, we've gotten a little more, you know, sophisticated about our choices. <clears throat> and so we figured, Hey, the, the, the world series is poker was no lack of players. <laughs> right. Right. hundred percent. There was a lot of illness, <clears throat> though, you know, right. It wasn't as uh, significant. Now we have protections in place and medications and stuff. So we said, okay, this is the year. Then the World Poker Tour announced that they were doing the ladies championship in December. And we were like, perfect. Let's, we have ladies week around the World Series of Poker um, ladies championship. So right. now we could do the Women Poker Hall of Fame around the WPT ladies championship and just marry the experience um, we're going to be doing the women in poker uh, tournaments and satellites around the country and things like that to support women to get into that event. It's sure. an eleven hundred dollar buy-in. That that's pretty steep, you know. Right. And um, so we want to make sure that every woman has an opportunity to either satellite in or to you know how to get there. Plus, we're going to have other events around that time frame yep. for women at a, at a lower buy-in. So when we come back, we're going to talk more in full detail about the 2022 uh, induction process, all of the events that are going to be uh, around that uh, Women's Poker Hall of Fame for the 2022 class in December. When we return here, as we continue the 15th anniversary celebration of the Bernard Lee Poker Show. <laughs> 